life on board was transformed in the post-war ships. Instead of living and eating in the same messes and slinging hammocks to sleep, as they had done for hundreds of years, sailors would now eat in centralized canteens and sleep in bunks. Life had to be made more comfortable if enough men were to be attracted to the service. Conscripts were no substitute for trained, long-service personnel in a navy of even greater technical sophistication. The creation of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, gave the Royal Navy two key commands, Commander-in-Chief Channel, one of the three main NATO commands, and Commander-in-Chief Eastern Atlantic. NATO also created a carrier striking fleet to which the Royal Navy made a major contribution. In the early 1950s, the main debate in the corridors of power was whether Britain would continue to maintain aircraft carriers as part of the striking fleet. The Admiralty eventually won, and carriers like Ark Royal and Hermes entered service in the mid and late 1950s, along with the much rebuilt Victorious. They carried nuclear strike aircraft, first the Scimitar, and later the Buccaneer an aircraft designed originally to sink Soviet cruisers. The new carriers were fitted with advanced radars and computerized control systems. They also carried British-designed angled decks to allow the effective operation of advanced jet aircraft. The increasing importance of nuclear weapons made the carrier striking fleet a key naval weapon. Yet nuclear weapons also made war less likely. More likely were limited conventional wars and crises. In 1956, the Suez Crisis showed both the potential and the weaknesses of the Navy in limited war roles. The landings in Egypt showed how useful carriers were in the conventional role to support amphibious landings and also as helicopter assault ships. Yet the crisis also demonstrated how long it took to assemble an amphibious force at then current degrees of readiness. By the time the force was ready, the political situation had changed for the worse. The carriers Albion and Bullock were converted into commando carriers to land Royal Marines by helicopter. In 1961, a commando carrier, Bullock, backed up by the aircraft carrier Victorious, deterred an Iraqi attack on Kuwait. Then, with President Sukarno of Indonesia pledging to destroy the British backed Federation of Malaysia, the Royal Navy gave vital support in the confrontation that protected Malaysia's integrity. In 1966, the aging Victorious had been damaged in a dockyard fire and was prematurely scrapped. The government announced that the Navy's plans for a new aircraft carrier were to be abandoned. It was a major blow. At the end of 1967, it was decided that Britain's economic problems prevented her playing a future role east of Suez. Instead, the Navy would concentrate on NATO roles in the Atlantic and European waters, where Alliance planners were beginning to rely less on nuclear weapons alone to deter aggression.